After several postponements, all space fans' eyes are on the much-awaited SpaceX Starship launch, a multi-billion dollar project that could finally see the light of day this next month. It'll truly be a moment of the century, and finally, it's really getting closer and closer. So for now, this week, something huge is definitely about to happen with S-24 and B-7 at Starbase. Let's find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Last month, the SpaceX team assessed the structural integrity of the fully stacked Starship Super Heavy vehicle at Starbase South Texas. During the cryogenic proof test on October 24th and 26th, engineers filled up the launch vehicle's propellant tanks with inert liquid nitrogen to simulate the pressure the stainless steel spacecraft would experience in flight. Note that NASA identified the SLS rocket's hydrogen leak during the cryo phase, so this test is one of the crucial stages during the entire test campaign. For this week, it's very likely they could go for another round of cryo tests during these closures as it's very important to ensure that B-7's fuel tanks have no leaks and they're ready to be fired. The fueling test will also be a critical moment for the quick disconnect arm that's never been used to cryogenically fuel a ship to date. Verifying its complete operational status is key to continuing with the remaining test sequence. Additionally, SpaceX could seek to repeat the fueling test to gain as much data as possible before proceeding into a multi-step static fire campaign, then aim for full cryogenic wet dress rehearsal. This will include a countdown that stops short of igniting engines on Booster 7 by mid to late week. Per the currently understood plan, SpaceX will first attempt to static fire a subset of the engines on Booster 7 before proceeding incrementally up from there to ultimately fire all 33 engines at the same time. Once engineers determine the vehicle is strong enough to withstand tons of thrust, they will perform a series of Raptor V2 engine static fire tests to prepare the methane-fueled vehicle for liftoff. This will help verify computational fluid dynamic calculations of what the exhaust environment will be like, what it will do, and where it will go. It'll be the first time they fully fuel and ignite a stacked Starship Duo and ignite over a dozen engines. Super Heavy Booster 7 is equipped with 33 Raptor V2 engines, capable of generating over 12 million pounds of thrust on liftoff. The test will validate the modeling of the acoustic environment all 33 Raptor 2 engines will unleash and how well the sound suppression system, now installed at the OLM, in deadening enough of the sound to allow for safe operations of the system. Full static fires will also provide multiple opportunities to fully fuel Ship 24 and observe how well its thermal protection system tiles stay attached during engine start and firing. We are proceeding very carefully, says Elon Musk. If an explosion happens at the launch pad, it could potentially destroy vital components that would have to be fixed and rebuilt. However, no matter what happens, everything provides engineers with vital insight to develop the Starship launch system. And once the first orbital flight departs, we certainly won't have to wait too long for the second as SpaceX has prepared everything behind. Notably, the company's just officially completed its 200th Raptor 2 engine. Starship and Raptor by extension has yet to reach orbit and is likely years away from scratching the surface of the established success and reliability of the Falcon upper stage in MVAC. But compared to MVAC, Raptor is more complex, more efficient, and more than twice as powerful and experiences far more stress and is three times younger. And Raptor 2 isn't the first version of the engine. Before SpaceX shipped its first Raptor 2 prototype, it manufactured 100 Raptor 1 engines between the start of a full-scale testing in February of 2018 and July of 2021. By late 2021 or early 2022, when Raptor 2 took over, the number of Raptor 1 engines produced likely reached somewhere between 125 and 150, impressive but pale in comparison to SpaceX's Raptor 2 ambitions. From the start, Raptor 2's purpose was to make future Raptors easier, faster, and cheaper to manufacture. The ultimate goal is to eventually reduce the cost of Raptor 2 production to $1,000 per ton of thrust or $230,000 at Raptor 2's current target of 230 tons or 510,000 foot-pounds of thrust. As of mid-2019, Musk reported that each early Raptor 1 prototype cost more than $2 million for what would turn out to be 185 tons of thrust or $11,000 per ton. It's not clear if that ever appreciably changed. 
In response, SpaceX strived to make Raptor 2 simpler wherever possible, removing a large maze of the primary, secondary, and tertiary plumbing. In 2022, CEO Elon Musk confirmed that SpaceX had even removed a complex torch igniter system for Raptor 2's main combustion chamber. All that simplification made Raptor 2 much easier to build in theory, and SpaceX's production figures have more than confirmed that theory. Despite those simplifications, SpaceX was also able to boost Raptor 2's thrust by 25% by sacrificing just 1% of Raptor 1's efficiency. Beginning with its first delivery in February 2018, SpaceX produced the first 100 Raptor 1 engines in about 36 months. In the first 11 to 12 months of Raptor 2 production, SpaceX has delivered 200 engines. That translates to at least six times the average throughput, but the true figure is even higher. In June 2019, Musk stated that SpaceX was aiming to build a Raptor every 12 hours by the end of the year. As is usually the case, that progress took far longer to realize, but in October 2022, a senior NASA Artemis program official revealed that SpaceX recently achieved sustained production of one Raptor 2 engine per day for one full week. Such a high rate, likely making Raptor one of the fastest produced orbital class rockets in history, is required because SpaceX's next generation Starship rocket needs a huge amount of engines. The Starship upper stage currently requires three sea-level optimized Raptors and three vacuum optimized Raptors, and SpaceX has plans to increase that to nine engines total. Starship's Super Heavy Booster is powered by 33 sea-level Raptors. Orbital class versions of Starship and Super Heavy have never flown, let alone demonstrated successful recovery and reuse, so SpaceX has to operate under the assumption that every orbital test flight will consume 39 Raptors. Even after the reuse of Super Heavy boosters or Starships become viable, taking significant strain off Raptor demand, SpaceX wants to manufacture a fleet of hundreds or even thousands of Starships and a similarly massive number of boosters. To outfit that massive fleet, SpaceX would have to mass-produce orbital-class Raptor engines at a scale that's never been attempted. But it'll likely be years, if not a decade or longer, before SpaceX is in a position to attempt to create that mega-fleet. If the Raptor 2 engines SpaceX is already building are modestly reliable and reusable, and it doesn't take more than 5 to 10 orbital test flights to begin reusing Starships and Super Heavy boosters, a production rate of one engine per day is arguably good enough to support the next few years of realistic engine demand. SpaceX's first orbital Starship launch attempt could occur as early as December 22. SpaceX currently has permission for up to five orbital Starship launches per year out of its Starbase Texas facility and will likely try to take advantage of that with several back-to-back -back test flights in a period of the next 6 to 12 months. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode, and don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Your support motivates us to create more quality video, and for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.